Hello, my name is Armando Fagel, and I'm here to talk to you about Eternocept, the TNF antagonist. Eternocept is an effective drug used to treat many autoimmune diseases. Several studies have shown that it significantly reduces the progression and symptoms of juvenile arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and particularly rheumatoid arthritis. My objective today is to explain to you the mechanism of action of Eternocept. I'll first take a begin by explaining the roles TNF has in the body. Because there is no current cure for these rhythmic diseases, the usual treatment options are pharmaceuticals consisting of non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as naloxicam and aspirin, and finally, once tolerance is reached, disease-modifying anti agents such as corticosteroids are administered. However, recent advancement into understanding the pathophysiology of inflammation has led scientists to discover the role cytokines have in the inflammatory process. Now we're going inside a cell. The World Health Organization describes cytokines as signaling protein molecules used for cell communication. It mediates and regulates immunity, inflammation, and hematopoiesis. Recently, scientists have been able to develop biological medications that are able to bind to the specific cytokines which promote the inflammatory process. These cytokines are also known as pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now, tumor necrosis factor, or TNF, is a family of pro-inflammatory cytokines thought to be produced by macrophages, monocytes, and even adipose tissue. The first two to be identified were TNF alpha and TNF beta. TNF alpha plays a more vital role in the inflammatory process. TNF alpha are thought to play key roles in joint destruction by increasing secretion of the metal metalloproteinase enzymes, which together with other proteolytic enzymes promote the destruction of chondrocytes, which leads to cartilage degradation which will eventually lead to joint space narrowing. Now, TNF-alpha also increases activity of osteoclasts, which therefore increases bone reabsorption, which may lead to bone erosion. TNF-alpha also finally transforms synoviocytes in the articular joint, which creates articular inflammation, which will, may, which will eventually lead to joint pain and swelling. Now, articular inflammation is also related to cartilage degradation and bone reabsorption. Now, do not be overwhelmed by this graph, but this graph basically shows other pathological roles TNF plays and other cells TNF interacts with in the body. Now, on the very left of the graph, you can see TNF here, and it binds, interacts with all these other cells. For example, on the top, it interacts with macrophages, which increases, again, pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines, which will increase inflammation. And this circular motion here is the main patho pathophysio pathological, pathophysiological uh, effect of these autoimmune diseases, because, or rheumatoid diseases, because it's the accumulation and pro proliferation of these white immune cells which creates which increases inflammation so it's a circular process now TNF alpha also binds to hepatocytes which will eventually increase the CRP and the serum now CRP stands for C reactive protein and this compounds the C reactive protein is what is used to measure inflammation in the body this is what doctors use to measure inflammation in the body now TNF alpha also finally binds to keratinocytes which causes skin thickening. Now there are two distinct cell receptors for TNF. There is the 55 kilodalton protein and the 75 kilodalton protein, also known as P55 and P75. As you can see here, you can see the TNF receptors P55 and P75, and it initiates TNF effects once it's bound to the on the specific cell. As an example, if TNF-alpha binds to these cell receptors, it will initiate its effect as a pro-inflammatory cytokine and, its effect and initiate its many pathological roles mentioned previously. Now, a tenorcept here, in this diagram here, as you can see on the left, 
is a protein consisting of two identical P75 receptors fused in the fragment crystallizable portion of the of the human immunoglobin. Now the human immunoglobin is the basic structure of an antibody with this fragment crystallizable refraction. It's the normal structure of an antibody in, in the body. Now this um, this extra human immunoglobin it increases eternal cells half-life in the body. Now this specialized structure enables, most notably, the P75 receptors, enables it to bind to TNA, preventing it from binding to surface cell receptors, preventing its pro-inflammatory effects, rendering it biologically inactive. Now, Eternacept is subcutaneously injected twice weekly with 25 mg doses or once week weekly with a 15 mg dose. It is slowly absorbed by the body with a peak plasma concentration after 48 hours and a bioavailability of 76%. Now, this bioavailability of 76%, it means it's the amount of therapeutic effect it has on the body, which means the 76% therapeutic effect it has, the 76% therapeutic effect. Now, to summarize, Eternacept is a TNF antagonist. Therefore, it prevents the binding of TNF to surface cell receptors. Now, the discovery of TNF antagonists revolutionized treatment for patients suffering autoimmune diseases and rhythmic diseases who were previously prescribed non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and disease-modifying anti-rhythmic agents, known to have, up to some time, little benefit and dangerous side effects. Now, my presentation has discussed and described the roles TNF has in the body and described the mechanism of action and how of Echinocept and how it interacts with TNF. Thank you. On a side note, the biological modification of Echinocept, how it was biologically engineered, was by using um, ovaries from a Chinese hamster. Those are references. Thank you.